if you could have any hat, any hat, you could just design your own hat, any brim size, any color, any binding on the edge, any bands, whatever. If you could make any hat, any company, anything, what would you wear? Do you ever think about that? What would be your ultimate, ultimate, perfect guitar? What would be your perfect signature model hat if you could go to, uh, you know, Stetson or whatever company you wanted to go to and say, I want to have my Kevin model hat and I want to make it, I want it to be long hair beaver in a, uh, in a white bone champagne color. Definitely long hair beaver with a three inch brim. Uh, neon pink binding, neon green band, and a pheasant feather came out. Whatever, you know, if you could do anything, what would you do? Um, I've thought about it all the time, and sometimes I just come back to my same old hats. I think I would want a black hat, kind of like like a Saxon, like a Stetson Saxon two-inch brim that I could just wear and be laid back in and just be cool, you know, like something nondescript, like an in black, um, maybe in a softer, you know, like my old Italian hats I have from 10, 15 years ago. And I'm like, yeah, I'll keep my black hat, maybe a brand new one. And then I go back to my green hat. Um, I think I would like that hat too, possibly in some custom colors. You know, I'd like it in light blue, you know, orange, purple, Kelly green, chartreuse, maybe chartreuse with some purple. You know, I like all those crazy colors and stuff. You know, uh, Pepto Bismol pink with like, you know, some kind of crazy band or something, or black with a purple binding and neon green band. Um, I like a classic hat in vivid, odd colors.
All right. Let's talk about hats, baby. All right, let's look at a couple of custom hats here. All right. Uh -huh. Custom is generally when you got to go off the menu and um, what you want is not available off the shelf. So in other words, if there's uh, 14 colors that make uh, up the Stetson Fedora line, but they don't make, um, you know, bubblegum hot pink, then you have to go custom, you know, if that's what you need. Or if you want a flat brim hat in royal blue, and that's, you know, you must have it royal blue and flat. Um, with the vintage band or whatever, you know, oxidized faded band, or something weird. Um, or like a tie-dyed, uh, some sort of a tie-dyed effect, you know, band. These are things that will go off the menu, and you're going to have to order a little bit custom-y um, colors. Um, exceptionally large brims, things that are bigger than 3-inch or 3-inch and above. Um, things like, you know, odd colors. Um, you know, you can always modify hats, too it's a lot lot cheaper so let's say it costs you seven hundred fifty dollars to make you know your bubblegum pink hat totally from scratch but we have a hat in a rose pink that's two hundred dollars and it's uh pretty pretty nice it's really nice so it only costs you another i don't know what it costs you know 30, 40 bucks to, you know, change a band or something like that. And uh, you could put on your own crazy wild band on a, a lighter color pink hat. You could have the brim flattened out, which is another, you know, inexpensive operation. And then you're playing, you're paying 200 plus a few extras, modifications, a new band, flattening the brim. You could even get some binding here to match that. So, let's say you have this blue hat with a cloud, fiery band like this, but not the fire color. You're doing clouds, like blue with white clouds on it, band. And then you want to put the blue and white clouds over here to match the cloudy bands. So you got a blue and white uh, tie-dyed band there, here. You flattened out the brim, and uh, you're working with this uh, pink felt, rose felt, like the Ontario. So now you just made a custom hat that's 200 and something dollars, between two and three hundred dollars, instead of going 750 and waiting, you know, a month to have your hat made up. Um, so you can modify hats, it's definitely doable. You could buy a hat, have the brim flattened, have the band changed, put a binding on the edge and just make it completely like some crazy, like the stuff that Cam Newton wears. Um, he buys hats from our hat maker. You know, he's got like, I don't know, a half dozen uh, hats from him and stuff. Um, things like that. You want something a little crazy, a little out there, something youthful, something that's an eye catcher. Um, maybe you want to get a black rancher, flatten out the brim, open the crown, put on a, uh, I don't know, uh, a, a purple, purple band, with some matching purple binding and put some kind of really big black, iridescent black and green ostrich feather, I don't know what you call it, like a rooster feather or something, and just make it really just bad, you know. You can just start with a hat as a platform. Go semi-custom, just modify your hats. Um, you can take a hat that's an interesting color Totally change the band, the brim up. Let's say you want to flatten the brim, or you want to put some binding on it. Um, here's an example. Let's say you want to make a, a hat like like Kevin wears, the green one with the binding. You find a hat with similar specs. You start with something like an Ontario, or you know, or a, a Seville, or whatever. You get a hat with a cool color, and. Um, you start modifying it. Um, you could put a, a black band on there, a black wind cord, and a little black binding, and then all of a sudden you got Kevin's hat, but in a different color. Um, there's 
very easy ways to go semi-custom. Going custom is obviously, you know, a luxury and it's going for, you know, exactly what you want and, uh, you know, you're not cutting any corners, but it's very expensive and, you know, who can afford it? Not that many people can. Um, I can't really afford it, you know. So going semi-custom is an option. Um, the truth is when you go to a hat shop, even if it's the best of the best hat shops, like a place like JJ Hat Center that's been around, you know, for a hundred plus years, 108 years or something, and um, the guys are experienced. I'm there 25 years. Uh, the owner's there, you know, more than 30, 35 years or something. Um, everybody, the manager is there 20 years, we're experienced and uh, we have a huge selection. Most of our stuff is, a lot of it is ordered custom, some not, you know. We have some classics like whippets and temples and things like that too. Um, but um, we order a lot of custom stuff and even we, we don't have everything, you know. So come, when you come in, you're going to have to make some sacrifices. You're going to have to first of all work within your price range. You know, you might first of all walk in and say, wow, that's the hat I want. It's exactly what I want. It's $400. I wanted a flat brim hat in a silver belly with that exact, in, but it's beaver, the mesa. Wow, I can't afford that. So, you know, the price range is going to take a few hats off. And then from there, you know, you want to work on your brim size that you're looking for and then hope they have within your price range and your brim size and your size, they have the colors that you want, you know, and the colors and it has the right kind of crown shape and the right band. And so the, the chances are it's very slim. You always have to make some compromises, you know. For me, I generally go with colors. When I see an interesting color hat, lavender, blue, or pink, I just gobble it up and I figure I could change the bands, I could change the crown shape, um, you know, I could, I could flatten the brim, you know, there are things that could be done, but the felt color you can't change, you know. So things like that, brim size, and you can't really change that, you know, you can cut a brim, but it's very involved, you know, it's not just cutting it, because generally when you cut off a good amount of a brim, you're cutting off all the curve, and you're left with just this flat part. So what it looks like, it, it looks like you just took like a compass, drew a line, and cut it with the scissor. You could tell the cat the hat was trimmed because essentially all this curve is on the end and you cut it off and you're left with just this straight little thing sticking out. So it doesn't look right. So what you gotta do is you gotta cut a brim and then block the brim. So the brim has to be blocked with that curve again, with this snap but to a short brim. So you gotta put it on the mold and shape it and everything. That's a big deal too, you know. You're wetting it, you're stretching it, you're heating it up and you know, you're pulling it over flanges and stuff and stiffening it and drying it. And there's a lot of things and then you gotta sand the edge and get the edge really nice, you know. Um, or if the person wants a bound edge, that's more work there. Um, so it's a... Uh, it's not a small job cutting a brim, you know, it's not cheap and quick, uh, you know, like uh, it used to be in certain shops, they would just, you know, and you're out the door and stuff, but that's, it depends, you know, like some of the old, uh, the religious shops, the Jewish shops, the brims were so big, you know, they were like five and six inch brims and stuff, that if people cut a little off, it didn't matter, you know, nobody cared because, you know, your flange was like that anyway, you know. So, um, but when you're cutting a good amount off, you're screwing the flange up. If you're cutting a tiny bit off, you, know, you can get away with that if you're making just a small cut. But generally, when you cut a brim, you need to cut it and block it. So that's where the expenses come in and it becomes like, eh, it's not worth doing it anymore. You know, like this price, whatever it is for the cut, and then this price for blocking the brim, reblocking it adds up, plus the, you know, the shipping and uh, whatever else has to be done, the stiffening or the, the edge work. Or the, so, I don't know what I'm getting at. I'm just saying that modifications like brim cutting are possible, but it's not cheap and uh, it's not so easily done. So, um, if 
finding your choice can be kind of like it's a gamble so you have to find you know in your price range you gotta find the brim size the color all this stuff has to be you know within your parameters of you know your idea of what a cool hat is so there's always some compromising that's going on um, for me it all starts with color um, that's where I want to start with um, I like I shouldn't say that. It really starts with quality for me, but I'll sacrifice my quality for the right color. I'll just buy it and I'll be like, eh, I don't care what happens. If the felt is not as good, big deal. Um, because I'm a sucker for like a really nice color. But um, I tend to only wear the really nice soft hats. You know, like the hats that are uh, lightweight, they're soft, they're crushable. Um, like my green hats and my little black hat. Um, this one too, this is nice and soft. I like this hat. This is a nice little hat. Uh, Stetson Temple. Um, I gotta say, boys, I like this. I like the fact that it's a little oversized and um, I might not have picked this color. It was a kind of thing like when our little satellite store um, was ready to uh, close shop. We had a five-year lease and uh, after the five years we decided we wanted everybody back in the big shop at JJ's. So we closed the little store, Pork Pie Hatters, and there was a sale and we blew everything out, 50%, 75%, and at the very end there were a few hats that were damaged and we were trying to get rid of them at 75% and people just still weren't taking them. Um, so, you know, we, there was like, okay, everybody can grab a hat or two, you know. So I grabbed this one hat. It has a little, like, a, a cut in it. What happens is when you're taking them out of the, the shelves, the showcases, the underside of the shelves have these brackets that are very sharp. So the hat hits against those brackets when you pull it out, and they get these slices. So I know this one has, yeah, it's got a small cut, like some damage somewhere. There it is, see it? Kind of hard to see with the glare, I know. But it's there. Right there. It's like a big old cut there. I don't care, you know. It's in the back. It's way back there. And um, that never really bothered me, things like that. So. Designing the perfect hat is funny, you know, you, you think you want this and this and this, but sometimes a hat that's uh, right out of left field that's not exactly what you would want becomes your favorite hat, you know, like I never thought I'd like a short brim black hat or a medium brim, and it's becoming my favorite hat. Um, let me see if I have that one here now. Yeah, see I've always wear, worn uh, two and three eighths inch hats in uh, sort of colorful vivid colors. But this is a two that I really am starting to like. It's an oversized two. It's just like our can. I used to wear a lot of threes, three inch brims. I wore them down a lot, you know, with my hair down. But uh, now that I'm doing the hair tied back a lot, I'm home, I'm just kind of comfortable wearing the sweatpants, a t-shirt, doing the quarantine, quarantine wild thing. Um, I like the lightweight. Smaller hats are a lighter weight. I like soft, good felt, uh, luxurious, and I like to buy them a little big. I don't like it squeezing on my forehead at all. Um, I figure if I go too big, I could just tighten it up a little, you know, or a lot, and uh, that doesn't bother me either because uh, I like the oversized look. So that's another thing. I, if I go oversized, it definitely pleases me. Um, if my real size is 59 um, and these hats run tight, I go up to 60. I'll generally buy a 61 or even, you know, this is a 62. And I think it was a particularly big running 62 that felt like a 63, which was unusual. Uh, yeah, so I always go up a size. I like the fact that I can just pull it down very deep and uh, when I'm doing the kind of loungy, hanging out thing. Feels good. Feels good not to be squeezing on the brow or on the brains or having this uh, headachey feeling. And it gives me room for the ponytail knot which makes my hair bigger. Or if I'm wearing my hair down, you know, 
either way. It could do either way. So, um, yeah. Uh, medium brim black hat. These these hats are becoming my favorite hats. It's kind of like an earthy kind of brown. It's mink. Uh, they call this the Temple by Stetson. The color is called mink. It's kind of an earthy, dusty brown color. And um, again, I never would have chosen it for myself. I, I wound up with that hat. This hat too. Um, and they just became my favorite. Um, this hat, I had one or two of them in an olive color. And... Uh, I still have them. They're like a taupe olive, and I really liked them, and I worn them like crazy. Uh, again, lightweights and stuff. Uh, so I decided to get one in black one year, and uh, I never regretted it, actually. It's uh, Sanello. I love this. I'm going to say the closest one to this now is the Ken or the Saxon. If, if you want uh, American-made, the Saxon has a, uh, a welted edge, like it's hemmed over. It's a little thicker which I personally think is cooler on a hat this style, but uh, it might be more elegant with the raw edge, uh, if you like elegant, but the, the welted edge is a little bit more cool, kind of like hanging out with the leather jacket, you know, with the, with the pool hole or something. It's like laid back kind of, you know, welted edge, you know, a little pool. It looks, um, it just looks authentic and cool, the welted edge, where the raw edge has more of a, uh, an elegance to it. It has a European sort of a, uh, a sharpness. I think that's kind of not an important fact for me. If I find the right hat, you know, whatever edge it has, it, it has. You know, that's nothing that really concerns me. For me, when I'm choosing a hat, number one is probably it lo has to look good, you know, looking good, being a cool style. Two, the quality I really like. Uh, it has to be good quality. And I bought some hats that were so-so quality and kind of regretted it. Um, you know, only because they were a cool color or it was a beaver and I wanted beaver or something. So I bought it too small, things like that. So, um, yeah, don't make sacrifices. Uh, if something's too small and you just really, really want it, don't say, eh, I'll call up Kev, he could probably figure out a way to stretch it. Padding it down is easy. Stretching it, not easy. If it's something like a whole size or two sizes, it's it's near impossible. I mean, we can do it, but, you know, the hat shows these side effects. So if it's something that looks nice and new and pristine, it'll make it look a little older. There'll be some side effects. You know, everybody can say, yeah, they can stretch, but then the stretch shrinks back. So the only way to truly get a stretch is to overstretch. So if you need to go from one size to the next size, you go to the next size and then you pass it, and then you pass that, and then you pass that, and then you pass that. You go about triple or four times the amount you need to go. So instead of going like 57 to 58, you go 57 to 58, 59, 60 or so. Maybe 61 if it, you know, it'll go. And then you let it sit, you know, you steam it, you do all that stuff. And then uh, when you let it go, basically it feels that big for about 10 seconds. And then for 30 seconds it feels like that big. And then a minute later it feels like that, you know. And then it goes back, it contracts. And then you wind up stretching it four or five times as much as you need to. And the amount that it stretches like, you know, millimeters. It doesn't hold. It, it just contracts. Um, if you cut the reed inside, you could get better results. Most people don't want me to do that to their hats, so I don't even bring it up. But um, if they send me their hat on a mail order, I'll do it a little bit slower and I'll do it the right way. But when people are doing it, you know, like and they come in right in front of me and they want to stretch, they don't want me to start clipping the reed and pulling things out and stuff. Um, uh, people don't like that. They just want their stretch and that's it. So, yeah, the only way to really do it is to overstretch the heck out of it. And there's so many side effects that it's just like, it barely works. It barely works at all. So, yeah, don't buy anything small, counting on Kev to, you know, make it right. It's it's really hard for me to do it, even as like the person who likes to solve those impossible problems and do those stretches that nobody else does. 
I'll still do them, um, but I recommend highly against it because there's all these disclaimers, you know, like before I do it, I tell everybody, you know, the leather's probably going to break, right? And there's a good chance your sweatband will split and crack. Is that okay with you? Um, well, is it a chance maybe it won't crack? I said, yeah, there's a very good chance it might not, but, you know, 50-50, it might break too. And sometimes, ah, we got lucky, no, no, no breaks, it's okay. A lot of times it breaks, so there's all these disclaimers you have to give. Uh, you know, that the brim is not going to look the same after. There's going to be stretch marks. I try to hide the stretch marks here with the, uh, the line of the band and stuff. But essentially you're pulling the hat out and stuff. So then the, the height of the crown gets smaller. You lose felt on the top and then the brim size gets shorter too. Of course, it's, it doesn't really stretch. It's not elastic felt. What you're doing is you're redistributing, redistributing the felt. So the height goes down, the brim size goes down, this hole gets bigger. And what's happening is it's going bigger, 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 and you're, you're basically losing brim. As this hole gets bigger, you're losing brim. So it gets shorter. And then the style of the top looks different, and so many crappy side effects from stretching. It's like never buy something really good and expect it to get fixed with a stretch. The only thing that really kind of works is just pulling the sweatband out totally. Just like, you know, going in between here and here and get those stitches and just get an X-Acto knife or an old school razor blade, cut the stitches around, pull it out, just take this whole unit out completely. Sometimes you can get the lining to just stay too. It'll just stay. It doesn't move. You keep the lining in. And there might be some threads you have to pull out with a, uh, a tweezer, but there are some threads that are keeping the band on. It goes one, two, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then there's little tack stitches, like one, two, three, you know, that goes around the band. Those stitches you do not want to pull out. They're keeping the band on. So be aware of those. Go like this, look inside, try to identify those stitches. They're strong, they're attached. A lot of times they're see-through nylon, like fishing line. Uh, don't pull those out. You don't want the band to fall off. But just get the sweat band off. That's it. Um, if you want, you could buy a cap banu, which is uh, on JJ's uh, website. Under accessories, you go to sweat band. It's a $5 pad that you could stick in here. I might have one I can show and uh, it'll just keep sweat from going through it. You know, you, you cut them in half and use about six inches of it so it doesn't tighten up your hat again. Just use a little bit, four to five inches, and your head will rest against it. Or, you know, forget it, you know. You don't need that. Um, you know, this will block some sweat, and eventually if something starts to go through, you can start putting a cap menu in there later, you know. So um, that's it. You pull the sweat band out totally. You'll get that size, like you know, 57 to 58. It'll it'll give you a whole size, or maybe a tiny bit more. So that's the only way. Trying to destroy the outside of a hat um, just so you can keep the inner band is ridiculous. You know, just get rid of the inside of the band. Just get that band out so that the outside of the hat can be saved and look perfect. That's what's important. Nobody sees the inside anyway. So, you know, try and I tell people, like, nah, I'd rather save it. You know, it's got the cool Stetson logo in there and stuff. Okay, you know, that's cool, but you're going to screw up the whole rest of the hat trying to do this, like, brutal, like, unorthodox stretch thing that, like, I'm, like, the only one who actually does it, you know? It's just, uh, don't do it, you know? Cut this out, baby. All right. So, um... Here's another one of my don't stretch a hat lectures. I think Daisy's the only one who kind of like listens to me. She's like, don't stretch a hat. Got it. You know, <laughs> I always overstate my point. But um, pretty much, you know, like to this day, every day I get some kind of comments like, you know, I've got this hat that's a little tight and I need to get one size bigger. Do you think there's something you can do? You guys still stretch hats at JJ's, right? Every day, you know, even people I really know and people who, you know, are close to me and stuff, they ask and, you know, and I have to just sort of reiterate, um, 
stretching makes your hats look really bad. So if anything, you know, just, yeah, just cut this thing out. That's what you do. Take this whole unit out. You're going to gain so much room. It's so much beyond any kind of stretching you could do. And once you do that, you'll be good. Um, you can always put it back in if you change your mind. You could just put a tiny bit of glue and they go right back in or sew it in. But, uh, yeah, you're not going to want to. Um, you could save it to take the sweatband out. All right. I think that's about it but um, as far as going custom um, custom I think is something that's really good um, especially you know if you know a custom guy who is still doing it at good prices you know like um, the guy at JJ's charges like 750 for customs and you know a lot of times people start off that way and when they start getting a name the price starts raising to you know like 1500 16 17 18 2000 and you know, it's worth it if you want a particular designer. A lot of hat makers will copy other designers and kind of, you know, if you want this other guy's expensive look, they'll do it, but, you know, they won't give you his trademark, uh, you know, things. If there's certain trademarks that he uses, that's almost like his signature. They'll, they'll have to take, you know, we'll do it, but we'll, we'll alter it. In other words, it's like we won't build a counterfeit of something, but uh, if you want to change it up a little bit, we'll do it. You know, you could say, okay, I love Cam Newton's hat that he bought in L.A. from this guy. Can you make me this? And he'll be like, well, I can make you something really, really close to it. You know, let's try to figure out something even a little better. You know, I'll be like, okay, well, you got purple binding here. How about if we do four quarters? We'll do purple here, yellow burnt binding on there. And then in the back, we'll do green and orange binding. So you got four color bindings. And you'll be like, yeah, yeah, dope. And then, you know, instead of doing one color band, why don't we do, like, you know, a three-striped band or something? Or, you know, or it's something that improves upon it. Yeah, custom is good, but, you know, there are certain things that are just sort of unethical, like... If a guy has a particular style, like the guy with the matchsticks and stuff, you don't want to start asking us to like make you the same matchstick hat as him. Um, we'll do something close, but yeah, you know the deal. It's, if you're paying a lot for a custom hat, why would you want something that's like you know a copy of something anyway? Because you know you're kind of figuring that this guy is charging you seven seven fifty. Eventually, he'll become one of those. $2,000 guy to, you know, and you, you want his original thing, you don't want a copy of somebody else. But um, going custom is something that I don't always uh, really think is for most people. I think a lot of people don't realize that you could go custom by going semi-custom. Like, you could get something really unique by just, uh, you know, buying the right piece of felt, flattening out the brim, putting some binding, you know, putting a flashy tie-dyed band here, matching there. So you could do all kinds of alterations. You could pull off a band and put on three thin black leather strips lined up. So it's a black hat with black leather bands. You know how tight that would look, like wearing some black, like, trench coat or something, you know. You could do it, you know, really laid back, um, you can go to the trimming shop. Uh, there's a place called M and J Trimming in New York, and they have just rows and rows of like things, that, you know, like different types of ribbon and different things from like India and Africa, like things with you know the little mirrors on it and the little jewels and embroidered stuff, and you know all these different beads and Swarovski crystals and leather and feathers, and you could go and get a yard of that stuff bring it into us and say, okay, uh, this is, has these little, like, uh, silver rings on, like, Hendrix's hat hat, you know, can you make me a hat using this trim, or can you go to M&J and see if you have something similar to that, um, or I want a hat that's beaver, it's furry, uh, beaver finish, and I want it, uh, leopard, I want a leopard print. Um, what color leopards can you get me? Well, we can get you a black and white leopard, a pink leopard, a blue leopard, and a regular leopard, you know. Um, okay, cool, you know. Um, any other prints you could get me in a long hair beaver finish? Well, we could get you a patchwork one, we could get you one with swirls in it. Um, 
you could go totally custom like that. You know, if you want to make something with a, a long hair finish, like a beaver hat, that's a, a very good way to do that. Um, because they're expensive anyway. If you're going to get something from Beat like uh, Celentino or Biltmore, you're still going up to like the you know the three hundred dollar range. So going custom can be pretty cool for unusual things like that. Um, generally, I, I recommend going semi-custom. Just get some good modifications done. You know, buy the hat you like. Let's say you're into the vintage thing. Buy a hat with the great vintage shape, like a, a Premier Stradaliner. Okay, tell one of the guys at JJ's to shape it with a really like 1940s Art Deco teardrop, you know, very authentic, and uh, have one of those guys shape it, and then uh, put a wider band on it instead of this band. Put a band like that, you know, uh, as wide as you can hand, as you can go without it going into the pinch, and then the big wide band will look way more nostalgic um, than you know something else like a whip it or a temple band. So put a big, big wide band with like a double bow or something like that, you know, and try to get some kind of little vintage feather in there, a wind cord. You can make your hat look like just awesome. Um, other ways to go semi-custom is you could take a hat and add um, a new, a new um, ribbon and match the binding to it. So take a simple hat like this and you could put something like uh, a grayish copper like oxidized faded ribbon band that's kind of gray with like little copper around the edges, you know, like faded vintage looking. And then get the same stuff on the edge here like a thin binding or a thick binding, really thick one to match there. It would look awesome, you know, just understated and cool. Or you could do something like um, something a little flashy. Maybe you have just a purple binding on a black hat, and that's it. All black with a purple binding. You know what I'm saying? Eh? It's cool, right? It makes you think. And they're, they're inexpensive modifications, but it makes it look like you've got like the most custom thing ever. And you could use your design sense. So, you know, you've got a hat like this. Say, can you put some like neon purple binding on there for me, you know, like fluorescent purple. And that's it. Bam! How cool would that look, you know? Or you could do two different colored bindings in the middle, you know, you have green here and purple there, you know, two different halves. They'll do that. Um, or a yin-yang look, you know, black binding here, white binding there, with white ribbon here and black ribbon there, you know something like that um, it's pretty much limitless um, so think about it you know you could go custom um, you could have a hat block differently if you have a western hat you could change the block you know for you um, open roads can be done with teardrops and stuff you know that's something you know you could probably do yourself but we might be a little neater if we did it and um, and think about it, going custom is a lot of fun. And uh, if you have a little bit more you know, money and more time now, uh, uh, maybe it's a good time to do it. Um, maybe not, but uh, it certainly is an interesting topic for a video. So I think I'm gonna play just a little bit of guitar. Just a bit. My new guitar. Thank mm -hmm. you. 